Hey, everybody. So glad that you've stuck with us through to day seven of week 13. I'm just going to read for you, uh, for you out of the text, the thought for the week. Memory is a funny thing. What we remember changes over time. What really happened doesn't change, but what we remember changes. As we age, our short-term memory begins to fail. We can't recall a multitude of things like where we left our keys, someone's name, dates, details of what doctors told us to do. But our long-term memory improves. My grandfather told me stories from his boyhood that I'd never heard. His long-term memory recalled events that really happened but had remained locked for years. He told me those stories and I passed them down to the next generation so they wouldn't be forgotten. But there are many things from his past that he never told me, ah, if only he had written them down. In thinking about these issues, I realize that where I leave my keys is relatively unimportant. Short-term memory loss is not usually as significant as it is annoying and frustrating. But long-term memories can be valuable, not to the world perhaps, but to the family, of course. We saw something like this in this week's Psalms. Long-term memory of Israel's victorious exodus from Egypt and acquisition of the Promised Land was crucial. These deeds of the Lord were critical to Israel's understanding of who God is and what He's like. If they were forgotten, only immediate circumstances would matter to Israel, and these could be crushing. For example, when they were captive in Babylon and the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, if all they had was short-term memory, they would see God as unfaithful, vindictive, destructive, and unloving. That's why Moses started the process of recording history in what we call the Scriptures. God used Moses to record what needed to be known for all time. It needed to be written so that it was free from the vagaries of memory. Because memory would fail without copies of the law, the Torah, Israel would not know how God rescued them from captivity in Egypt. They would not know God's plagues on the Egyptians, his parting of the Red Sea, his destruction of Pharaoh's army, his leading them through the wilderness, and his conquering the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Until oral tradition was captured in Scripture, generations had to pass these stories along verbally, or the next generation would never know them. The national memory needed to be long-term to appreciate the faithful loving-kindness of God. And so God provided the scriptures. Now, if only people would read the scriptures, they would know the things that happened a long time ago. Things God did that give his people the confidence and hope that God intended in his holy word. Although in literate cultures we have the ability to read and ready access to inexpensive reading materials, we don't read as much as we should. The majority of recent high school graduates in the U.S. today say they'll never voluntarily read another book ever again. And this spells disaster for the church. Bible reading and study continues to decline, and so the church doesn't remember what God has done and taught. If we neglect God's words, we will be doomed to repeat avoidable situations and doomed to live through consequences we could have prevented. The days of Israel's judges were like this. Israel lived by short-term memory, forgetting what the scripture told them, not recalling the recent deliverance by God from the trouble they had at the hands of an oppressor. They played the harlot with foreign gods, so God sent a new oppressor so that they would turn to him. When Israel cried out to God, he sent a deliverer and Israel had peace. And then Israel repeated the cycle over and over again. In Deuteronomy, God told Israel to teach his commandments diligently to their sons and talk of them when they were sitting in their houses and when they were walking by the way, when they lay down and when they rose up. They were to bind them as a sign on their hands, their foreheads, and the doorposts and gates. Israel obeyed literally with phylacteries and mezuzahs, but they failed with respect to really knowing God's word. How do we know? 
Just read the history of Israel. In fact, during Josiah's reign in Judah, the book of the law had been lost in the house of the Lord and was only discovered when workers were cleaning out and restoring the temple. The parallel for us today is that so few people in the church read and understand the Bible. Our challenge is to continue telling the stories, to continue passing down to the next generation the things that God has done so that they know God's character and ways. And my dear, dear friends, this is exactly why I keep doing this study with you and we keep posting it up on the internet, on YouTube, in various places so that we can be faithful in passing along the Word of God, the stories of history, so that the next generation knows. I hope you'll join me in that. Be blessed, and we'll talk to you in our next lesson. Bye-bye.